I'm Mr. Panda, and this is my VCR of Doom, where we fast forward through the past. This review project will have us looking at a lot of anime. Duh! But the special twist is we'll be focusing on anime released in the U.S. from the early 2000s on back, because we're reviewing anime on videotape. Of course, when I say videotape, what I'm really referring to is the VHS cassette, which was developed by JVC and brought to the United States in 1977. From its debut in Chicago until JVC made its final standalone VCR in 2008, a ton of content was released on this format. As you might imagine, not all this content has seen a re-release on Blu-ray or even DVD back in the day, and anime is no exception. Media experts predict that a tape left to itself will basically last up to 25 years before it really starts to degrade. Since the majority of what we're interested on this show was released between 1990 and 2000, that puts us right on the edge for a lot of content that you probably have never seen and might never get the chance to watch. I take a keen interest in this particular subset of anime for a few reasons. In a number of cases, you might have situations where there's a particular dub or a few extras that were only ever on a VHS release because a company picked up the license for an anime later on and never got the rights to the original content. In other cases, for whatever reason, an anime might have only ever been released on a VHS version. Of course, those aren't the only reasons that we're doing this. I get a very nostalgic feeling when I take a tape, slide it through that front door, push play, and listen to the DTMF signal as I wait for the show to start. And I think that's something that might make this show unique, because we're ripping all of our own tapes here. Everything that you're going to see from these viewing selections was created right here at Manly Battleship's headquarters. So with the help of one of the best VCRs ever made, my JVC HRS 9800U, time to watch some anime. This episode, we're watching this one, Sanctuary. Not to be confused with the Mark Dacascus film or the Viz live-action adaptation that was brought over in 1997. Actually, come to think of it, why aren't we doing the live-action movie? <laughs> Fuck that. The copy we're using is the English dub version, which you could tell by looking for the, the text on the side, or you could just notice the dark blue sleeve color. A lot of different anime companies use sleeve color to denote the difference between the dub version of a tape and a sub version of the tape. If you're ever out there looking for sanctuaries, it's green if you're looking for the subtitled version. Sanctuary is an OVA, or Original Video Animation, which means that it came directly to videotape rather than, say, being released in the theaters or on television. Released in 1995, it clocks in at about 70 minutes, and that's about all the information I had when I first bought the tape, so let's hit play on Sanctuary. Like light and shadow. No, more like back or front. Ah uh, yes, the quintessential school roof scene as the opener. Interesting. Sanctuary opens with our two main characters, Akira Hojo, voiced by David Kay, and Chiaki Asami, voiced by Paul Dobson. The whole opening scene is a kind of a tease, as our boys are discussing how to make a choice that will drastically affect the rest of their lives, with Hojo resolutely extending a fist before the scene fades on some smooth jazz. Did they fight it out? What's going on here? Who knows? Oh yeah, I love the sound of the stock market in the background while I'm making love. Let me give you a big hint. This is not the last sex scene in this show. This anime isn't a hentai by any means, but there's a comparable amount of R-rated sex to many live-action dramas. Director Takashi Watanabe is better known for biggies like Slayers and Boogie Pop Phantom, but his experience making erotic shows like Onkinki Clinic probably helped him decide to bring some of these angles to life. Up and down, up and down, it's driving me crazy. The old farts, they're trying to ruin my liquid assets. Ah, it's a metaphor. I was being funny, don't you get it? No, it's not funny. The basic premise comes via an internal monologue while a financial magnet bounces on him. Our boys want to change society. I will grasp at and climb their abandoned veins of success. Hojo is revealed to be a member of the Yakuza, the Japanese equivalent of the Mafia, while we get a glimpse of Asami attached to a mainstream politician's campaign. <laughs> Man, these whiteout transitions are a thing. Roll title card! And what's the first thing we get? Another sex scene! It's all about getting that sweet, sweet blackmail going. Most of the running time is focused on Hojo's side of the plot, presumably because bad boys just play better. But Asami gets several good moments, including his official introduction during the meeting with the politician Sakura. And just who the hell are you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? 
I'm going to stop because I don't want to get a copyright claim. That's what I'm going to do. Honestly, the odd trope or whiteout isn't that big of a deal when Sanctuary is promising something a bit different from the usual 90s anime fair. Political intrigue and conspiracy is the kind of drama that often gets missed in the medium. It helps that the main cast have some decent voices behind the screen. While Dobson doesn't have a lot of big anime roles in his filmography, you might have heard David Kay as Megatron in Transformers cartoons through the 90s and 2000s, and both of them have extensive backgrounds with secondary and supporting characters. I that we'll meet at the top. On my life, friend. Don't worry about me. As you climb up to the top in the political system, I'll be doing the same in the underworld. And for the most part, that's the arc of the story that we get in this OVA. A warm-up round as both men support each other and climb to the top in their respective fields. Hey, more sex! Hojo looks to consolidate power in his crime family under the suspicious eye of his Don. Asami feigns to cover his incompetent politician's butt while he prepares to be an unprecedented young politician. The show really manages to capture the kind of cutthroat thinking that prevails in these circles, as Sakura won't submit to Hojo's blackmail even when the young Yakuza attempts to seduce his daughter. Then I kiss the babies. I've got another chance at life, understand? I don't care if every single Yakuza dog in the world has his way with her. He's a lot tougher than we thought, damn old fart. It's looking like I'm gonna have to make my move as well. Yeah, it's time to stop fooling around and take some real action. Let's do it. The resolution of our boys leads them down a path to butt heads with the powers that be, both angling to gain ground while surviving. How'd you get in? This man is deathly ill and needs to see his doctor. There's plenty of little surprises in store, as this OVA is based off a much longer manga written by Sho Fumimura and illustrated by Ryoichi Ikigami. Incidentally, you older fans out there will probably recognize his character style from Crying Free Man. Show your power, son. This is the kind of woman that needs two men on the job. One of the interesting departures from the source material is that the manga never spells out who the reigning political force in Japan is, although it's hinted at plenty. No, when it's safe to show your ass, son. In our release of the anime, at least, the top dog is part of the official LDP machine. There's a much more frustrating change that appears in the anime, and it's that the underlying motivations of Asami and Hojo are never actually brought up. In the manga, it's revealed that both of our characters are survivors of the killing fields in Southeast Asia. This huge and intriguing premise that is driving them to create a sanctuary in their new home of Japan isn't mentioned anywhere on this tape. Oh, well I guess it is literally on the back of the tape, but nowhere else. What is this, Metal Gear Solid? Is this like an early form of copyright protection so you don't get the whole story if you don't buy it legit? Something else that kind of bugs me is the secondary character Kyoko Ishihara, a detective who has her eye on Hojo. Another scarless tiny whistle. There's only one way to blow him. I get the impression she has a bigger role in the manga, but other than a very tiny intervention during Hojo's gambit to stay good with his boss, she doesn't actually have any impact on the story. And let's be honest, since their first meeting involves Hojo drugging her and briefly tricking her into thinking he took her virginity in a hotel room, her subplot isn't exactly top drawer in this day and age. Two of the house reserve on ice. Thankfully, I think that that subplot is made up for with another one, the one involving Tokai, an old Yakuza captain that gets out of jail and presents quite a problem for Hojo. Takai is voiced by Brian Drummond, who most of you probably know as Ryuk from Death Note. He's a great character actor, and I'm convinced you'll get a kick out of his slightly unhinged crack addict routine. Hmm? Hmm, and boring. Are you saying my pills aren't as good as a belt of your liquor? <laughs> I guess there are some cliches you just can't avoid. The end of this OVA has both been set to be a power in their own right and continue their campaign. Sanctuary makes a lot more sense when you frame it as a sales pitch for the manga, a more common practice than you might think, giving you enough to make you interested without removing the desire to read the full story. I hope it helps this time. 
And something that I think makes a really nice final touch is the way that we circle back to their goal and finally show you how they were each set on their path. Don't worry, we'll find it. And if we can't, we'll build it together. Our sanctuary. Scissors, paper, rock. Scissors, paper, rock. Scissors, paper, rock. Scissors, paper, rock. So where do we fall on Sanctuary? Weak supporting characters and taking a while to unwind all the story threads isn't the best attribute for an anime. But I think this OVA does exactly what it set out to do. Make you interested, make you ask questions, and make you interested to buy the manga which Viz was also marketing at the time when it came out. It manages to do all of that with a narrative that has more pluses than not in an uncommon genre for anime. And it helps that the voice acting is decent. What the hell do you think you're doing? Mostly. And even the soundtrack is pretty swell. In the end, I think we'll go ahead and say hit rewind on this one, because it's definitely worth your time. That's gonna wrap up this video. Feel free to comment below with some anime suggestions for me to review in the future. And I hope to see you next time on Mr. Panda's VCR of Doom, where we fast forward through the past. Fury, the motion picture, stars Mark Hildreth as Terry Bogart, with Ronma Onehouse, Miriam Sirwise, Sulia, and Ronin Warriors Matt Hill as Lauacorn. Fatal Fury, the motion picture, is the mega-powered martial arts mega-hit of the year. Available now from Viz Video.